listening to the Satin Lounge with Kieran A. Breathe it in. And we're back with LGBT independent filmmaker Robin Detman. Uh, welcome back, Robin. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, I'm just listening to you going, I wonder if she can um, talk to our child before it, like, just <laughs> say goodnight to it. We, well, we don't, just like, look, I don't know, look, goodnight, little one, I don't know your sex, I don't you know your name, <laughs> but you're beautiful. Good night. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to play that. <laughs> you're belly. so funny. Um, it's so nice to have uh, you here and to get to know you more intimately and uh, understand the strength of your survival and just your creativity and uh, the person that you are. Wow, what a magnificent woman you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What's the name of your film company? I tried my best to. <laughs> I tried. I did, Robin. I tried my best to pronounce it. And after, after a while, I just said, you know what? We'll ask Robin to do this. <laughs> It's um, okay, so it's Duende Films West. Duende, it's Duende. It's a beautiful name. It is, and it's actually, um, it's a word. It's a Spanish word. Okay. And my wife Megan brought that to me. And you know, a lot of times with foreign languages, you can't really translate them exactly into English. Yeah. But basically, what it means, and what it means for me, is that um, in your art, you need to be able to look death in the face. And as an artist, wow. you need to be able to do Listen that. Listen to this woman. Here she um, goes. And uh, it's not always a comfortable place to be. <laughs> right. There's imagine. there's times when I'm you know working on some projects and I'm like, oh, I don't know. But you have to be able to challenge yourself. And mm -hmm. Duende reminds me that it's like if it's you know, um, Michelle Gondry said this great thing. The filmmaker Michelle Gondry. He said, you know, if your project doesn't have a fifty percent chance of failing, mm -hmm. you will never do anything great. And it's true because it pushes you, and wow. and you know, what we're, a perspective. we're That's... already sort of obsessive. Directors are obsessive, sort of to begin with, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you gotta keep challenging yourself, and you gotta push it mm -hmm. and push it because you're ultimately, you know. It just makes the project even better. So. I see that. I that's see where that. that comes from. Well, that's where Apple Seeds comes from that's because right. uh, you were definitely pushing the envelope with this, even the content of mm -hmm. this film. Uh, can you uh, share your premise of Apple Seeds with the Satin Lounge? Sure. Um, it's about a woman who has to go to great lengths to save her child from the cycle of abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, including risking everybody involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a psychological thriller mm -hmm. about a woman who has to save her baby. Mm -hmm. And um, it's intense. You know, I've, I've, uh, I'm working with Ashley perriman Quash, who's this wonderful writer, and we were working on a feature. Mm -hmm. And long story short, she brought this script to me, and um, she was actually up for... Um, there was a contest, of, you know, write, uh, write about the theme domestic violence. Yeah. And if you win, you get fifteen thousand dollars to uh, to produce it. And mm -hmm. at the time, I was I was working, I was doing a lot, and I was like, mm, and I hadn't read the script yet. And I'm like, I can't, you know, I'm a little mm -hmm. overwhelmed. And then it came down that she was one of three finalists, and she and the director she had gotten had to drop out. So mm -hmm. she called me up, and I was like, all right, well, send me the script, and I'll you know I'll try, I'll see. And I read it, and I was just like, I was floored. Yeah. And it just resonated with me, and. Yeah. In, in two ways. I mean, one was purely creative. I just knew I had to make this short film yeah. as a director. And then the other was the theme of domestic violence and how, you know, every day we pass these walls and it could be going on right on the other side of the wall. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky that I haven't had domestic violence touch me very much. I, I did have um, a partner at one point that, that did... There was a that did try to hurt me. Some, oh. Yeah, and I, you know, mm. it's very tricky, you know. People say they're going to get help, and they don't. And it, But the next day, I went to work, and I, you know, I'm one of those people where they're like, how are you? I'm like, well, don't ask, because I'm going to tell you. Okay. And it just was amazing to me that 8 out of 10 people, male, female, all ages, yeah. have had some form of abuse. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's so bad. You know, my husband, my wife, my girlfriend, my boy. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. I was floored. And then... There's that, and then there's the other side of people who are blessed to not ever have to deal with domestic violence, but mm -hmm. they don't get it. And they're like, well, why did she stay with him or why? You know, and it's like, right. Right. it's so tricky. It's you know, so... One of the things that I found interesting, and I don't know, maybe you, you researched this, you don't hear very much about 
abuse like that or domestic violence in the LGBT community. Mm-mm. Even though, you know, I mean, you hear a lot about mainstream, but you don't really hear that it's happening between two lovers. Uh, but it, it does not mean that it doesn't exist. That you know, I didn't, I didn't really do research along those lines, yeah. but I can tell you that, um, like, for instance, that day where people were talking to me about yeah. abuse, yeah. that... Um, there was only one LG. Uh, there was one gay man mm-hmm. who said that his partner was mentally abusive. Mm-hmm. I, I think, um, and I don't. I don't know the statistics. I think gender has a lot to play with it too. I mean, one of the things mm-hmm. you know that we want to do is, um, you know, from the very beginning, I told Ashley, who was the executive producer, the writer, who's also the executive producer. Yeah. Um, I was like, I really want to. Uh, do screening benefits and use this film as a centerpiece to start a dialogue about female representation Mm. and how that can contribute to domestic violence because um, I had actually seen Gina Davis talk it was also during that time where I had just had my lumpectomy Mm -hmm. and I was like okay everything's going to be okay but what am I going to do now and I went to go see her speak and so she has um, Gina Davis has a gender institute it's gender studies in media and television Mm -hmm. and she literally goes to studios and says hey women are 51% of the population why don't we have more why don't we have that Mm -hmm. and you know it's Gina Davis so she can walk into Sony you know but that's her thing is that girls need to see more girls yeah, in more see roles ourselves represented more yeah and that's in every aspect we're not just speaking of lgbt we're yeah. just women in general yeah you know uh ethnic women even mm-hmm. uh, where are we I, no it's so true mm-hmm. and uh with this film you know i want to i want to be able to have a panel discussion i actually have a couple of psychologists that are willing to be on the panel we're actually mm-hmm. going to be talking to the gina davis institute to see if we can get wow. her Good luck with that. Gina I hope Davis. that works out. Gina, Gina. Gina. <laughs> I'm six foot two. Okay, um, that's probably creeping her out. I know. I'm sorry, Gina. That was weird. Um, We're all I know. <laughs> No, but really, good luck with that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because we want to start, you know, I just feel like we need to be mindful of the representation of women. And I don't think every role should be, Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be cookie cutter, like she's heroic and she's this and she's that. But just be mindful Mm -hmm. of your female characters, Mm -hmm. you know, directors, be mindful of who these are. Because Mm -hmm. young women and children that see this, they're they're forming their views of themselves. Mm And that can lead to domestic violence because, you know, there's a lot of psychological things of people who are attracted to that. And a lot of times there is a cycle of violence and and people have had that in their past. But there's also a lot of self-esteem issues with victims who allow themselves to get caught in this net. Right. It's because of a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, it could be um, cyclic. It could be absolutely, mm-hmm. you know, something generational yeah. for them. Uh, they've seen it. They repeat it unconsciously. They repeat yeah. It. There's so many stories that are untold. And I, I'm so proud of you for finding a voice in film to where you do attack these specific um, issues and where you, you're not afraid to show the ugly because there is yeah you know there's there's ugly in all communities you're building your legacy for important causes bringing a consciousness to places that we ignore frankly we ignore yeah yeah we and we can't there's there's this great thing that happened during pre-production i was working with a director for uh, photography alejandro wilkins and Mm -hmm. we were making decisions what camera we're going to use and lenses and we were also talking because we're both at a certain we were both at a certain part in our careers where we wanted to start being taken more seriously and move into features. And he, you know, he said something so beautiful. He said, "You know, I just I'm at the point where I want my work to tell people who I am." Mm. And I was like, oh, "That you, yes. isn't that beautiful? beautiful?" I was like, "I mean, of course, I think we all we're all sort of drawn to do that anyway, but to articulate it." And mm-hmm. I was like, "That's exactly that's how perfect. you feel." Yeah, yeah, and that's you know, in this film. And, and yeah, I read events. somewhere that you said that this film helped you find your voice as a filmmaker. Yeah, and that's part of it. That's definitely... Well, know. where where can we find the film? Is it is it in film festivals or is it is there a platform or a website? A, how are you distributing it? What, how do we see it? Uh, well, so right now we're in post-production and we it'll probably be completed um, the middle of February. We just found out that we got yet another contribution from a big post-production house. I can't actually announce it. No, it's yeah. been it's been 
amazing. So beautiful. The mm-hmm. people who have been working on it. Awesome. And being gracious. So people can contribute. Um, is, the, is there a campaign yes. or something? Um, you know, our Indiegogo campaign is over, but people can still contribute to mm-hmm. help us because we're still paying everybody just much lower rate yeah. than they're used to. Um, you can go to the website, www.appleseedsthefilm.com. Okay. Um, we have, we are sponsored, our fiscal sponsor is San Francisco Film Society. Mm-hmm. So you can contribute and it can be a tax write-off. Wow. Um, you can just send us a check. <laughs> you can, send we have a PayPal, a um, which would be, you know, which PayPal. would be phenomenal. PayPal, just send it to <laughs> PayPal.